Yes. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Scandinavian Regional Cluster Tour. My name is uh, anne katrine Torp, and I work at SIGIS in Denmark, uh, and I am the Regional Cluster Lead uh, of Scandinavia. Please, next slide. First, I would just like to inform you that this uh, webinar is being uh, recorded so that you can all watch it uh, on our YouTube channel later on, if you wish. And if you, during this webinar, experience some technical problems uh, or you have a question, then please use the chat function and someone from the team will uh, assist you. Also, uh, if during the webinar you have questions to me or some of my co-presenters, feel free to ask them in the chat. And I, I want to ask you all to please uh, unmute yourself and don't use your cameras. Thank you. Next slide. So the agenda. First, I will give an over, overall introduction to the Smart AgriHubs projects and the concepts behind it. And then I will give a short presentation to the open call and the innovation portal. And then the re, three representatives from SIGES, Ako, West and Luke represents how they're working within the project and in general with digitalization. And we will end this webinar with a Q&A. So please feel free to to write some questions in the chat. Next slide. So overall, Smart AgriHubs, it is a 20 million euro project on the horizon 2020. And it aims to bring together a consortium of, well, we are now over 164 partners in the European agri-food sector. The project wants to realize the digitalization of European agriculture by fostering an agriculture innovation ecosystem, which are dedicated to excellence, sustainability and success. And by connecting all European agriculture and IT innovations, the project Smart AgriHubs extends digital solutions into the agri-food sector and thereby helping farmers with their businesses to achieve real and, and attainable goals. The project started in 2018 and will last four years. It has partners all over Europe. So Europe has been divided into nine regional clusters and Scandinavia is one of them. The project will reach its aim through two things. First, encouraging and supporting innovation experiments, which are called flagship innovation experiments or FIEs. And secondly, it will build and expand a European network of supporting organizations, which are called Digital Innovation Hubs or DIGs. But what are a flagship innovation experiments or a digital innovation hub? I'll tell you now. So please, next slide. A flagship innovation experiment, it serves as, an, as a successful and efficient innovation experiment. And within these flagship innovation experiments, ideas, concepts, and prototypes are tested for the advancement of the digitalization of the agri-food sector. And eventually these products created by these experiments will be introduced into the market and the research and information gathered will be shared with other innovation experiments across Europe. There are in total 28 FIEs which are divided into five sectors, which are agriculture, herbal farming, livestock, fruit and vegetables. And in Scandinavia, we have three ongoing FIEs, which you will hear more about later. Next slide. The second thing was the digital innovation hubs. And a digital innovation, digital innovation hub is a public or private partnership for innovation, providing a mix of different services to its clients, including such as R&D. They provide these services close to the end users and thereby catering to the needs of agriculture producers and food processors in a specific region. There are currently 140 digital innovation hubs in Smart Agri Hubs and, and more are joining. And as the pictures to the right illustrate, 
A digital innovation hub is like an orchestra connecting different partners and stakeholders. So please, next slide. If you want to know more about this general background information, please feel free to visit our website. Next slide. So within the project, several calls will be announced. There's been one, the latest open call uh, had a goal, which were to mobilize our ecosystem and beyond in proposing digital solutions in addressing the current COVID-19 crisis and its impact on the agri-food sector. The open calls are made in order to support one or more innovation experiments, and they're mainly targeted at SMEs and digital innovation hubs. And you can apply for a 20% funding within these calls. And they will be announced uh, at our website. So please, if you want to know more, or see when the calls are being launched, please visit one of the websites presented at the next slide. At these slides, you can find, at these uh, websites, you can find all the information you need uh, about these open calls. Next slide. The last thing I will tell you about is our innovation portal, which can also be found at our website. At the portal, you and your organization can discover the great Smart AgriHubs community and the latest development in the EU agri-tech sector. You can easily be part of the network by creating an account for yourself and connecting it to your organization. Please, next slide. By registering at the innovation portal, you will be visible to all partners throughout Europe. So all sectors and regions are to be found at the portal. So please sign up and you will be part of the greatest agri-tech network in Europe. Next slide. And now we will move on to the regional cluster of Scandinavia. Next slide. Yes, in Scandinavia, the three main actors are Seges from Denmark, which are represented by my co-worker Henning and I. It is Lise from Luke in Finland and Janne from AgroVest in Sweden. So at any time, feel free to contact one of us. Next slide. Next, we will hear presentation from the three countries and we will start with Henning from Denmark. So please, Henning, the floor is yours. Thank you. I just wait for my presentation. Yes, hello everybody. My name is uh, Henning Schorst and I work for Seges in Denmark, where my field of work is, is farming machinery and, and using data from farming uh, machinery. But I, I will start by, by telling a bit about how, how the Danish uh, ad, advisory system is organized. In Denmark, we have what, what we call a two-layer system, where layer, layer one is our partners, which advise the farmers directly in the field. And, and then we have got layer two, that is uh, Seges and the, the Danish uh, ag Agricultural and Food Council. We, we generate knowledge to be used by layer one. Please shift. On this slide, you can see uh, how our 31 independent partners are located in different areas of uh, Denmark. Please shift. Seges, where I work, is, is located in Aarhus. And you can say we are an innovation house where we, where, where we are about 500 colleagues to support layer one by phone, by uh, field trials, projects, and, and, and different digital solutions uh, for agriculture. But, but we have um, a lot of different uh, specialists concerning crops, concerning uh, farming machinery and EU work. Uh, that, that is my uh, field of work. We have uh, specialists concerning drainage, irrigation, data handling, and so on. 
So uh, we 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 are uh, we we have different specialists in 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 most topics concerning uh, agriculture. Please shift again, and then please uh, yes, and and then 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 the Danish agriculture. Culture and Food Council. It, it is located in Copenhagen. There is also about 500 colleagues, but but their task is to focus on on political lobby work. That is what they do. Please, the next slide. But I will start by giving an example of a potential pro project that we are uh, planning at at Seekers. And uh, right now we we are seeking funding. So uh, I hope we will. Get this started, but but uh, our plan is to use a supplied data from from a slurry application by creating wireless access uh, from from a supplied data to Seekers by by applying you 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 utilization rate automatically and uh, subsequently BIA fertilizer to level nitrogen level all over the field, and we have made some calculations to see how much the farmer could profit from this and. It, it shows that uh, he he would gain more than 35 euros per hectare. So there is money in this. Please shift again. We have this map that is a uh, near measurement when applying slurry in the field. And you can see that uh, there is different colors that, uh, said, said, said that show different level of, of uh, <coughs> nitrogen. In the field, and we have made some calculations. We have got about 13% uh, overlap in the field, and we have got about 13% uh, of the field where none or very little slurry are applied on the field. So you can say that uh, we we could improve this 26%, but of course we we will never reach 100%. But there are bases for big improvements uh, by uh, getting more even supply of uh, nitrogen. Please shift again. Then we have contacted the, the Danish manufacturer of slurry wagons that, uh, that is named Samson to, to hear about the possibilities and, and, and they, they connect their slurry wagons by, by isobus to the controller located in the tractor. So if you think it's controlled from the tractor, uh, Samson can, can provide a supply uh, data when they have applied slurry on the field. So our plan is to to make a connection from the controller in the tractor um, to to send a supply data wireless to to Seekers uh, data hub. And, and and when when we have got it in 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 Seekers data hub, we can start using those data. Please shift again. Today. Today we have our our field program where we generate um, the the plan uh, concerning fertilizer to be used in in the field. So our plan is that this data should be sent wireless to the tractor and the slurry wagon, so so the so the driver can see how much slurry to apply in the field. And um, please shift again. When when slurry is applied on the field, uh, the slurry wagon will will generate this as applied file where where it locates uh, how many tons is used in different spaces of the field, and um, then then we will use our slurry effect calculator, which which is a tool that we have got today. But uh, when when applying uh, climate data as uh, temperature, wind, humidity, etc. Uh, we should be able to calculate how, how much uh, effect we have of the story on the field. And uh, when, when we have done that, we will, please shift again, we, we will create a uh, BIA file to be sent wireless to, to the fertilizer spreader, because uh, then it, it can even out uh, the, the different levels on 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 the field and and thus uh, gaining those uh, 35 euros that we have calculated should benefit the farmer when we have uh, done this. Please shift again. That was the first topic. 
Uh, the next is that I would like to tell you um, what what uh, what what we are doing in in FIE three in Denmark. I'll give an example. Please shift again. We we are working on right now to create uh, a secure data link for documentation uh, purposes uh, by by creating wireless delivery of documentation for authorities because we we expect mandatory and, and voluntary documentation uh, to be present in the future. But uh, one, one of our partners, Agro Intelli, have mounted a camera solution uh, that, that can also send data on a, on a Danfoil sprayer. And, and we are, we are going to test this on the field conditions this year. This year, you see this picture. Then, then file can also create an, an, a supply file when applying uh, or, or when spraying on the field. So this a supply file can be used for, for documentation by authorities. So the plan is that this a supply file should be sent to the, to the Danish field database uh, that, that is owned by Seges and, and thus owned by the farmers because Seges is owned by the farmers in Denmark. Um, I, I also would like to say that today we have about 85% of, of the Danish farmers data in the Danish field database. So um, if, if, if the farmer allows it, we, we could send this documentation to authorities uh, in, in the future. But it, it, it is important to underline that we, we, we will only send the farmer's data if he asks us to do so, because we are owned by the farmers. But uh, this could be an easy way to, uh, to, uh, to send documentation to authorities so that the, the farmers should have little work to, to do this task. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> Our plan is that all, all machinery for, for example, for spraying, fertilizer, slurry, cover crops, seeding, etc., etc., should have this possibility in the future. We see this as a possible method for, for controlling if farmers are complying with legislation if they want to, of course, and we see it as a possible uh, method for allowing farmers less control when delivering uh, voluntary documentation. Uh, for example, uh, um, um, documenting the uses of, of VIA uh, fertilizer uh, could, could be a reason to allow a high level of, uh, of uh, nutrients because we have, we have very strict regulation concerning nutrients in Denmark. And uh, for example, uh, uh, documenting cover crops uh, could allow this hectare because then the authorities know that it is done properly. And um, to finish up, uh, we expect documentation to become a, a license to operate. It is not because that, that, that we want it, but, but we uh, estimate that uh, it, it, it might be necessary in the future. That was um, pretty much what I had. I think I will give the work to, to Jenne from AgroVest. I think we'll take questions later. Thank you very much, Henry. Uh, I guess there's a presentation coming up. It's uh, rather strange to talk to all your squares with two letter combinations instead of sitting and have a physical meeting. Uh, I will start with taking a little bit about the AgroVest and uh, what AgroVests are and in the <clears throat> connection with smart agri-hubs then and also the FIEs, I will turn over to the FIEs that we are involved with. In Sweden we are involved in all three FIEs uh, that are included in the Scandinavian cluster. AgroVest was um, started as an uh, operation already in the beginning of the 90s. It was very much linked to the West Sweden uh, part, the region of West Sweden. And it was also very linked to the strong position in food processing and also, of course, agriculture and food processing industry that is strong in this region. Uh, uh, so that was the start. And actually, AgriVest maybe is one of the 
earliest hubs because the the thinking of the, the creation of AgriWest was to connect academy with uh, agriculture and also with the industry to get implementation of new technology, new ideas, uh, yeah, new uh, growing techniques and such. And has been involved in many different pro projects since 92. When it comes to technical technological innovations, uh, it could be good to say that AgriWest has been very early in trying to create better implementation of precision farming and educational advice for the farmer and also in different projects uh, regarding plant production. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> as a hub, uh, not only as a smart uh, agri hub. Uh, there's project leading, project management, that is one very important part of it, uh, to create a um, new project and connect all the stakeholders around the project. Uh, <clears throat> that is one of the major functions in the hub. And uh, of course, it's very much linked also to get the project funding. And it's been linked to during the last years to the European Innovation Project, of course. Um, and that has been a major part and <clears throat> of activities and very successful in finding funding. But also in longer programs as uh, uh, running through different production systems. During the years, it has been more and more focused to, towards primary production. Uh, as I said from the start, it was very much addressed by the food industry and process industry. Now the focus is mainly how to effectivize and make the primary production better. And also better linked into the food first step of the food processing uh, chain. Uh, thirdly, communication as always. Uh, if we want to have implementation by the farmers, we need to have good communication tools and we work with very much physical meetings and now in this uh, corona times also of course focused on digital meetings uh, trying to meet with the farmer trying to introduce uh, technology and trying to get implementation done because that what is the all about the funding is what we get out of the implementation to get a better sustainable agriculture and both economical um, all the others. Next step, please. Uh, slide, please. Uh, yeah, core activities, uh, knowledge transfer innovation together with the sector and uh, project application. Actually, the team is doing very much of writing projects and application and working closely to SMEs and and innovators and uh, entrepreneurs that want to have an idea done and help that as an innovation and development hub. So, as I said, between industry, academy and research and financing organization and other partners that could be up and going. Next slide, please. Uh, as a result, maybe also before Smart Agri Hubs, uh, there's been activities within AgriWest. We have another project that goes more uh, nationally and re re regionally. It's Smart Agri, and it has included um, very much of the European Innovation Project with the SMEs trying to get new products out on the market and new business ideas. So it's Broad market analysis is prospect development, it's project development, it's business development and building networks and of course, once again, financing. This has also linked more, more, uh, more than the West region now. It's uh, since Smart Agri Hubs is national for AgriWest in Sweden. Also the link to uh, other project in the east part of Sweden is AgTech 2030. And there's a lot of networking building up now around Sweden when it comes to the digital innovation or the digital development and in agriculture. Next slide, please. Yeah, that's the, if you want to know more about 
the smart agri activities outside smart agri hubs and ag tech you can look at the links there next yeah next slide please yeah yeah uh, i should say something but i don't know if this is the right order but of course, Lisa will tell you more about the uh, tools of the value drainage chain. In Sweden, we are part of that with uh, working with the uh, FMIS companies as Startup X and working with the farm uh, here at Oker. And of course, uh, <clears throat> the sector here, the grain production in Sweden is rather important. And we have also mills and uh, local markets involved in that, uh, that FIEs, trying to connect all data. But Lisa will take that into much more detail. Next slide, please. And I think we are already there. Then if you go back towards um, the FIE 5, one step back, I can tell you more about the other, <clears throat> the other experiment that we have in Sweden. We have on the FIE 3, which we heard Henning talk about, we had an upgrading of a of a very multifunctional Roho and Cedar in Camleon system. And of course, this has been, the target here has been to, sorry, to guide the SME, what is the future need of the upgrading system to collect data from a Roho? It will be cameras and will be capacity, it will of course be, all sensors. What what can you do with a, when you're driving over uh, the field in uh, mechanical weed treatment and such, which is main focus for the machinery? And what what is the technology that you need if you should make an investment in a new system that will be hopefully bearing for ten years ahead? We have uh, in FIE four. Um, on the Swedish side, a product development of a digital pig scale, uh, measuring the, the, the weight of pigs with the camera systems. And that is very interesting to find solutions to be, that could be validated of the very time consuming activity of weighing pigs in order to optimize feed consumption and such. And we also then are in the FIE 5. So with that presentation, I'll leave the word to you, Lisa, directly. Thank you. Hey. Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Lisa Pesonen and I'm working as a senior scientist at LUKE, which full name is uh, Natural Resources uh, Research uh, Institute Finland. And uh, it's a kind of old fashioned uh, research center taking care of the, the sector's uh, research uh, between universities and, and practice. And, uh, I think I start with uh, continuing if, uh, explaining you about the uh, Flaxic uh, innovation experiment, which I uh, co -co coordinate together with Janne. Uh, so we have uh, their grain chains in from Sweden and, and Finland. And I have to say that I have my own co-lead here in at Luke, uh, my colleague Ari Ronkainen, who is pretty very much uh, helping me, and we share our workload at Luke. Uh, so you can also contact him if there's anything you want to know more about this, and I can't uh, tell you. I first explain uh, the core idea of this experiment and then in the end of my presentation I go to Luke's role as competence center or digital innovation hub. So let's start the next part, slide please. So uh, when we think about grain chain as a material flow it's a pretty simple one. The grain leaves farm and goes to processing 
industry like mills, bakeries, and then the, the product goes to retail and there to consumers. But when we think about valued grain chain and where the value is um, coming from data and created with digital uh, tools, the picture looks different. Next slide, please. So here we have have a blue arrows, two-sided arrows, uh, two-way arrows, which describe the data flows between different actors. Of course, this is a very limited uh, presentation of a of, um, um, very possible way to create and add value to grain uh, using digital technologies and data. So there can be also other possibilities, but this is uh, how we have started to ex explore uh, this, this topic. Uh, since uh, in Nordic countries and especially in Finland, the grain production has not been profitable enough and we have to do something about this. And now we are trying to seek out that how these new technologies could help. Um, here we see that the, the core and uh, base for data, where the data origins is farm and farm processes. And here precision farming technology is in key role. Also here the arrows are, are, are in both ways. So the machinery and workers get uh, commands in digital form and also they produce data to share with other systems and farmers. They create new data and new, new knowledge. But here where the story of this valued grain chain start is here when we are approaching the time for harvest. Like it is about this time in, in a year. And we start with selective harvesting and logistics uh, where we try to identify the differences in grain quality, it can be physical quality or the story behind the grain in different uh, grain uh, in, in, the, in, in different fields and field parts. And we try to harvest them in separate grain batches, grain lots, and keep them separate through the dryer systems to silos and uh, sales batches. And we aim to use the farm information, farm data to create carbon footprint calculations for the sales batches, measure grain quality in different steps. Uh, we create traceability by giving IDs in to all the grain lots or batches that are produced in different phase, phases of the chain from harvester, from lorry to dryer to silo under which uh, ID there's the previous steps IDs are uh, found. So they make a kind of uh, ID tree for trace in farm traceability. And then farm management is a key in a key role to combine the, all these uh, information and data and make it as product information when taken to ele electronic marketplace. The, so the if the selective harvesting is a one new way, smart way to add value by identifying and keeping different qualities separate, the, the next very key point is the marketplace where farmers try to seek the best possible price from the market to the grain lot. And then there's one more aspect, but in whether this this really function in business wise. There also all have to be a demand for this type of with the data or traceability attached grain. And that is where there it comes to consumers, what consumers want and what co consumers appreciate by buying certain products or paying more about certain products. What are they? preferences and what these digital tools can do and what we can do with data is to kind of have connection directly with farmers and consumer groups 
and create awareness of production and the value, the real value of the grain produced and maybe even co-create new products. Uh, next slide, please. Here we, we are 11 partners in this experiment and uh, here in a key role as a farm management information system combining all data is Suonentieto uh, in Finland and Datavext in, in Sweden. And the launcher of this all uh, uh, process is AgroInteli and they uh, selective harvesting services. Then we have GrainSense providing these measurements, quality measurements, protein, moisture for grain in different uh, steps of the chain. Ecomodules is Lucas carbon footprint calculation service. And then we have Viljatori in Finland as an uh, electronic marketplace. And by the way, in Sweden, uh, you have Skira there. They have been in our conversations and are aware of what we are doing in, in Finland and and a Swedish grain chain will use Skira services in, in Sweden, but they are not direct partners in here. And, and also uh, these which are marked in, in green, uh, they are also not direct partners in the uh, experiment and actually not also prior systems, since they are different in all farm farms. We have three farms, Knechtila farm in Finland, organic farm as a similar farm, which is conventional farm, and then head ochre cetery in, in Sweden. They all have their own setup of, of uh, digital uh, equipment and machinery. Uh, but nevertheless, they are very important and I want to rise up the, the meaning of like Valtras Telemetrics, Valtra Connect, which at least Finnish farmers use for collecting fuel consumption data, which is very essential part when, uh, when uh, calculating carb carbon footprint. And then we have had uh, VTD facilitating our conversations with consumers and, and Farmers Union MTK has been uh, assisting. And, and giving financial support to that action. So this looks a mess. If we want to make a data flows here, what, what does it make to implement this? Even though this is still a very simple case. Um, uh, next slide, please. So to ease the pain uh, for, for implementation, we, we we try using um, uh, integration service provided by Senia uh, value net and it works as a connector between the uh, cloud backends of these services that farmers are using. And uh, so instead of making point to point connections between each others, they need to do one technical uh, integration, but still these different services have to agree how, how, what data is exchanged and make the data descriptions to each other so that they understand the messages. But we hope and think that this makes more easier and lowers the threshold to make the connections that in the end serves the farmers. So um, this is the idea of, of uh, our experiment. And so we are exploring here how this is one way uh, to, to show and try to make uh, more value to, to farmers' business by digitalization. Let's see how, how it uh, ends up. Um, uh, then I would like to go and explain you how we think as LUKE, as Competence Center or Digital Innovation Hub. Next slide, please. Okay, here is still, uh, I forgot this slide. So if you want to know more, we have a website and Twitter account and please contact Janne or me. Uh, next slide. And then next. 
the services that digital innovation hub should uh, provide uh, are described like this. This is kind of stack of uh, services and this is kind of shared uh, among uh, smart AgriHubs partners. So the digital innovation hub should provide services to business, to technology and, and ecosystem. And, but it said that it, the digital innovation hub does not have to provide them by, sell, sem, by themselves, they can also link to such services who, who can, uh, can assist. Next slide. So this is how we have identified Lucas services at the moment in, in these categories. And three pluses means that this is pretty much Lucas core business, core activities. And uh, where there's a minus, it means that this is not at Lucas scope at all, and perhaps won't be. And uh, so here are some services we are pretty strong with technology and like providing um, even though we have, have cut out our testing facilities and testing services we still have something like isopos lab for for unofficial conformance testing and so forth that we can provide but as you see uh, luke is not full digital innovation hub with this type of services. Uh, next slide. So this is the idea what Ari and I and also our customer services at Luke have been thinking of how to organize this uh, digital innovation hub. So we think that Luke is actually a kind of competence center with all these services that it has and will develop further. And then the actual hub is more or less a portal and database, a kind of technical service that is free of charge for everyone and accessible by anyone, where the, who is seeking information can, can find actors, projects, what has done already, developments and links to different services. And at the moment in, in Finland, we are pretty broadly talking about what, what digitalization in agriculture means, what it is, what we should do, what are the steps to, to, to boost the digitalization. And so maybe this is one of the topics we will kind of rethink in, in coming months. But uh, this is also a very good time now to think about Nordic collaboration and is there anything we should take into account in, in, in this Nordic context when building these hub systems? Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. So now we'll go to the Q&A. So if you have questions, please use the chat function. And uh, I will ask Henny and Janne also to turn on their camera and their mic. So Lisa. Do you have any uh, suggestions yourself on what we're missing in this Nordic collaboration? In, yeah, I think that that we all are pretty small countries that uh, we, we should really find out that how we could share already existing resources and facilities more efficiently and how, how to do it in a handy way and usable way. And especially this Nordic uh, testbed network is something interesting that uh, I I'm thinking and what is the role of these digital innovation hubs in, in, uh, uh, in kind of sharing the information about this network. Yeah, so uh, Janne, do you have any thoughts? On yeah, this? I think even if Smart Agri Hubs is uh, European project with 28 countries uh, where I see the most potential to, to coordinate and uh, work together better is actually in the in the Scandinavian area and this has to be maybe even more focused on we are very focused on what we are doing in 
the so-called execution plans in the project. So we should do that and that and that and then we write the reports. But the connection between Segas and Luke and AgroVest for my sake, I think could bring much more value to, to the, the end result if we put more effort into that in the future. Yeah. You know, to, you mean like expanding the Nordic network already within the project? Also expanding, but also increasing the, the connections with, with other uh, projects and with other research or implementation and experience. Uh, more of uh, sharing and trying to get, uh, because if if the rest of the world, the rest of Europe looks at us, uh, maybe Denmark is a very large producer of pigs, for instance, but otherwise we are Scandinavia, or we are both the grim uh, when it comes to other areas. So I think we we would benefit very much in, uh, in type of the frame programs as Horizon 2020 to be a part to, to, to work together much more there and actually utilize the competence and the resources that we have uh, more jointly in the future. Yeah. yeah. Henning, Henning, do you have any uh, thoughts on what Jan and Lisa are saying? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> I had to have my microphone on. I, I think about that. I think it, it is very important with projects as the one here, because here, here we learn what, 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 what problems are are in uh, and, and, and other uh, parts of uh, Scandinavia. Uh, else, we, we, we just work about problems in Denmark. And uh, so I think, think that this project and, and others like it is very good to, uh, to, 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 to get some common experience about agriculture. Mm. Yeah, I think a, a very good point. I often wonder. Yeah, what when now we have this network, but what when the funding in the Smart Agri Hub runs out? No, we need to find a way to keep the network going. Any we thoughts? Got, we got the question on the chat, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll come to that just in a second. Okay. Sorry. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, you know, now we have this network in the project, you know, all Europe and all Scandinavia. How do we keep it going? You know, after the project ends. Yeah, that that is a very good question, then, Katrin. Yeah. Of course, um, I think what what Smart Agri Hubs have wants to create is, uh, of course, building the network is one of the major and to 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 get the digitalization to move further and faster into the agriculture sector. But it, it means that all the infrastructure that we are building in Smart Agri Hubs is actually very newly built and not used as much as it should be so there there needs there has been a, a connection of course for internet of foods and in iof and goes into smart agri hubs but it must continue if we should get value of the money of the um, 20 million euro that is spent in the project uh, so and how that should be that could be a part of what we should discuss more in the Scandinavian cluster, maybe how we can maybe initiate uh, further uh, thinking in this area towards the Commission or towards you, uh, other European partners. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Lisa, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I'm. Uh... I think that the, the idea how to get this going is that these digital innovation hubs should be kind of functional and their business models should be such that they are running after this project. And yeah, uh, yeah. that is what they are coaching us and, and coaching the, the, and uh, help us to improve the business model and so forth. And so I think that if we succeed in that, so um, it's then up to digital innovation hubs to which one and how actively they want to, to want to be connected with. Yeah, yeah. So I think I would take. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and, and of course the digital innovation hub uh, consists of all these actors. That what the actors of the, the hub really want. 
I think we go to yeah. questions Just one from the more, desk. More uh, thing, uh, uh, thought about it. Very much of when it comes to innovations, comes from small entrepreneurs, from small companies, from uh, people that are very creative, but have a lack maybe of getting it more structuralized when it should be scaled up or which it should be demonstrated. And uh, one of the activity that has been very good for Sweden uh, within AgriVest and RISE that we had was a specific agri-venture event, uh, trying to get financiers and uh, entrepreneurs and newly started companies to come together. Because in the end, it's actually very much, technology is very much about products and companies and getting it out to the market when it comes to implementation. Mm -hmm. And here we can do more uh, in the Scandinavian way as well. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. So let's just go to questions from the chat. The first one, uh, what about lobbying of the whole data management system? How is it planned? Uh, the data management system, is it uh, in one of the FIEs or do you have does anyone know this? I don't know exactly, but I have a I have something that I would like to add on this issue. Yeah, please do, Henning. Yes. Um, like I told before, we are trying to connect uh, different controllers from from Tractor to to Sega's Data Hub right now, and, and we have had meetings with uh, Trimble and uh, Topcon and some of the the, the larger. Um, manufacturers of this, so we are we are trying to get data by by connecting by, to to those. But but there are very many. So now we are looking more to uh, look at the for example uh, the German uh, DKE data that is uh, a what do you call it? It is all all the German manufacturers that 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 has made this common database. So if if we connect to them. We have uh, maybe 40, 50 companies in, instead of making connections to everyone. That, that is simply too expensive. So, so I think we have to look to those uh, common uh, databases to uh, connect to them to uh, achieve data from them. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Any other comments, Jan or Lisa? You might have one comment. In this uh, de development that we see now, we collect a lot of data yeah, and, and uh, we actually collect uh, massive data that we don't use. The, the value of the data is when the data can be used in some way. And of course, this will lead to a possibility to get the higher profitability in the primary production because the data is produced on the farm by the farmers mainly. But it's very important to get it integrated into the value chain because otherwise it's just a lot of data. So how you present the data and what kind of data <coughs> that add values, that that is a very interesting part of the FIE 5, I think, Lisa, because that is when you really can see what the data could be worth in money, money-wise. And this is a very hard trick because we are always talking about how we divide the value, added value in the value chain of from, from farm to fork. Uh, mm. But the, the digitalization and the new technology might um, emphasize that there can be changes actually and put a little bit more uh, of the value into the farm side than to the fork side uh, or to the trade and the, the processing. Uh, and I think that's very important. But otherwise, also, the data can be used to optimize the food processing because we are not producing, we will produce bulk, but we will produce products in high volumes with very specific uh, properties that is mm. can be used. So I think uh, data management system and it, it, the most important how we can use the data 
how we can transform it into value. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So, uh, oh, but, there's uh, a comment about... There, there was a question how we lobby yeah, that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's the question. I don't know. We, we haven't planned it yet, but good, good hints are welcome. <laughs> yeah, because... Yeah, please send us the hints. I think we'll just go to the next question. Uh, Henning, maybe you can start with this one. It's how do you see the advisory services as partners to, to disseminate the new digital solution to the farmers? I know you work with uh, some of the advisory companies in Denmark in, in one of the FIEs. That's correct. <clears throat> We, we have learned that many, many farmers uh, think that it, it is very heavy to start by using data. So many will not, not try because they, they think it's very difficult. But, but uh, some, some of the, 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 the advisors that, that, that have been in, in our uh, FIE4, I think it was, they have worked with this. And they have learned that uh, if they take it step by step and uh, take it to the field to uh, to, to, to get the farmers started out there and, and have, have help uh, at a company to um, check that electronics work on tractor seeds, etc. That uh, then the farmers think it is very exciting. So when, when they have been started up, they will take it from there. But it is important to, to give them help getting started. That, that is the main lessons we have learned by our experience in the FIE3. Thank you. Janne, do you have a, how yeah, do you work with the advisory service in Sweden? When it comes to smart agri hubs, that is the major part of the FIE4 when it comes for the pig scale, for instance. <clears throat> it's been a lot of discussion in workshops around how advisory service and advisors in the pig production could help in implementing and it's been taking experience on how long time it has taken for the precision farming to to get into the implementation actually and some of the experience we have shared with the uh, university of Skövde that are into gaming and how to present uh, uh, um, a program for for education and in school or for 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 healthcare in hospitals for nurse, nurses to take new technology and imply it uh, and there's a lot of interesting models and technology avoidance model the tam model that i'm a little bit interested in because really you need to get it working directly you can't have oh, this cable should be put there and oh that was disconnected or you have odd different standardization and such you need to get it simplified and here is the advisory service a very crucial part to, to get the farmer up and running and and actually also the advisors must be more aware and secure in, in their technology knowledge, I guess, because everything is happening rather fast and we have, uh, we should put the technology into the production and uh, we have advisors that are experts in filling in the forms for EU, we have plant production and pest control management and so uh, I think we need to be uh, upgrading the technology level of the advisory service uh, broadly to get it out in the field faster. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think I will just take the last question. Uh, Lisa, maybe you can answer this. How education is involved in the activities of, you know, Digital Innovation Hub and Competence Center? So how is education a role uh, at LUCE? Oh, yeah, LUCE is not the educational institution. Uh, no, I know. So, but... yeah, yeah. So and and so obviously that is uh, kind of lacking. And and one of the the technical the, this was the skills and uh, education or the, one of the services. I don't remember if it was under business or was is it was under technology, but but that is one of the services. And so I see the, the educational institutes are in a category of competence centers in, in that sense, kind of mm. they are 
really the one to give the, these educational services to, to anyone who uh, requests them in, in among these uh, regional clusters or, or digital innovation hubs. So very important role. Yeah, so you think more collaboration with the educational centers? Mm. But uh, this the, this idea of digital innovation hub, I, I think that if uh, um, like uh, apply, uh, University of Applied Sciences would like to act as a digital innovation hub, that is of course possible. Mm. And uh, so it is just to, if wants to carry out and have, have resources to to really uh, fulfill these uh, requirements and like likes to invest this type, they are really welcome. Mm. And and like our approach is that we try to to serve whole country and and a little bit abroad. But uh, these digital innovation hubs can be also speci specialized to some topic theme or some subsector or, or a very limited one, but uh, even stronger in what, what they are doing in that sector. So it depends on which which role you would prefer or if you have any any kind of business model in, in mind. And of course, there has to be a need around mm. you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I see that this kind of network type structure is good where different digital innovation hubs are networked in within the country, within regions and uh, then in, in Europe. Yeah. So thank you and I think on this queue uh, I want to thank you all for joining this uh, webinar and uh, don't forget it will be available on YouTube later on. So thank you all for joining and uh, have a great day. Yeah. Bye. 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 Yeah. Bye.